Hi, I'm Hugh Whitmore. Welcome to the One True Church. Today's Bible instruction is entitled, We're Halfway to Jesus. And what I mean is, as of March of 2024, when I make this presentation, we've passed the halfway point in the end times battle. In the book of Revelation, God describes this battle and the spiritual methods used by both sides. The battle goes back and forth, starting with us in God's church, rising up in power through faith, obedience, and works that create glory and power for God. Then, the rulers of the dark force fight back with their rituals of confusion, injury, and death that empower Satan to stay in control here on the earth. This pattern goes back and forth in Revelation, with God pausing after each round to ask us in His church to have patience and work a little harder. Due to our efforts, we now have passed the halfway point in the Revelation story. This is good news, and you believers have yourselves to thank for this and its wonderful progress toward the return of our teacher, protector, and Savior, Jesus of Nazareth. There's only one spiritual process that creates the end times, and it's 100% guaranteed because it's based on the physical properties of God's universe. God creates all energy, but Satan is in control on the earth because he steals a great deal of God's energy, which keeps God from overcoming Satan until we respond as he requires. God's plan of eternal salvation works when he takes something physical, which is our righteous, obedient works, and turns these into glorifying energy which he will use to overcome Satan and bind him in punishment forever. If we do our job, Satan is doomed and the earth will be replaced with the eternal kingdom. So keep up the good work. Two major steps are required for us to fulfill eternal salvation. And the first is to turn from the false apostle and false prophet, Paul. In Revelation, Paul is called out as a liar and false apostle in chapters 2 and 3 and as the second beast in 1311. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. Jesus is repeatedly referred to as the lamb in Revelation, and Paul is a liar who pretends to preach Jesus while actually preaching Satan, who is also known as the dragon. Chapter 13 is where Paul is repudiated as the second beast, and it's just past the middle of the book which confirms we're halfway to Jesus coming back because I believe at this time in history that Paul has been adequately repudiated to serve God's use. Immediately thereafter in Revelation in chapter 14, the Gentiles are acknowledged for their part in salvation, a big part of which is the repudiation of Paul. Then the violence of God's judgment begins. The spiritual source of Satanism on the earth, called Babylon in Revelation, is destroyed. And the Satanists separate the earth into two groups called Gog and Magog to fight their final battle, which they are in the midst of doing right now with their phony wars they're fighting. So we are past halfway, but don't stop working on the process just yet. The end times is a spiritual process that can start at any time within the church and has started many times through history. But the process has always been turned back by the rituals of the dark force. The most recent rise in power of the church began eight years ago when I started my ministry and dedicated it to teaching believers why Paul is false so they could joyfully return to the kingdom teachings the Father sent with Jesus. I've shared this knowledge with hundreds of believers over the years, and I knew by the numbers who responded and the corresponding satanically created moral decline on the earth that we were making progress. However, until recently, I've never stopped to concern myself with our progress because I always believed that when God was ready to move forward, he would alert us by what Peter quoted from the prophet Joel in Acts 2.17 at the Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was sent to the disciples. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And I believe this has happened. 
After eight years of toiling in the Father's kingdom, within the last three months, I received two visitations from the Father where he applied great and long bursts of energy to my entire body. I made two videos about these events called My Spiritual Visitation and My Second Spiritual Visitation that you can search under my name on YouTube. I was confused about what to do about these visitations, but I thought that if the energy really was from the Father, I should look around to consider the progress of His church. In the beginning of my ministry, it was just me and one other person teaching that Paul was false. But when I looked this time, I found that many people are teaching Paul is false in many different locations, and many of them are doing a better job of it by far than me, which is very good news indeed. Given my limitations, I'm only able to make a certain number of presentations, and the way of the world is that I only appeal to so many people. But now those teaching about the false prophet Paul are doing a complete job of filling God's church with the number of believers it will take to overcome sin and Satan. Since this first step is now in place, it's time for those of you who are fully converted to move beyond this focus just on Paul. It's time for the obedient church to move on to the next phase of the Father's plan. There's no longer any need to debate or argue with Paul believers. You're just too valuable to God to do that. Just let them live with their choice with Paul. God needs you now to move to step two. At the end of the Revelation to John in Revelation 22:11, Jesus says, He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. If you encounter someone who's moving toward Jesus because they feel that Paul does not add up, work with them and encourage them. But leave the wicked Paul believers to their unjust and filthy state and turn your full energy to step two so we can see Jesus soon. Step two is to elevate your spirituality and commitment to the Father as Jesus taught in Mark 4 when he defined the mystery of the kingdom. Whatever you're doing right now to serve the Father through the Son, do a little more. And I know we all have to earn a living, so do as Jesus said in Matthew 10, 16 when he sent out the apostles. I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. This is an instruction for negotiating the rough world of the workplace. But then, when you are done with your day, isolate yourself for some period to do something for the Father. Read your Bible daily, even if only for five minutes. Pray to the Father. Fast and pray if you are able. I fast and pray a minimum of one day a week on the Sabbath. And in my fast, I read aloud the entire book of Revelation, which takes about an hour. Reduce your sin. Start with your worst, most repeated sin, and do a little less of it. Curb your tongue, especially from anger, which builds up easily in this evil world. Look less at things in the media you know you shouldn't be looking at. Argue less and forgive more. Protect those who need protecting. Live simply to avoid coveting things you really don't need. The dark force will respond with troubles on the earth, but remember to protect your heart for God, because no matter what we all face, or how long it takes us to move the end times process forward, you have to work for God every day, like the end could be tomorrow.